Hi, and welcome to our video lecture. Today we're going to be talking about thermal modeling using Python. And specifically, we're going to be using Collimator as a user interface. So today we're going to develop a, a pretty simple thermal model, but I'm going to show you how you can solve this kind of system really easily in Python, and eventually build this up into a pretty complex, sophisticated model. All right, so what we're going to be talking about today is uh, we're going to be doing an energy balance just on a building. So here is our building. Um, this building, we're going to suppose that we're trying to keep this building hot at some temperature T. And we're using some kind of a heater here that has this input Q sub heater. And our building, because this is hot, let's assume that it is cold outside. So outside, we're going to have a T infinity, and we're just going to assume it's cold outside. But this is pretty interchangeable. If this, if you had to switch into cooling mode, uh, a lot of the math stays the same. So first, what we're going to do is develop a really simple dynamic energy balance of our system. And I'm going to keep this really simple, assuming that there is uniform heat loss through all sides of the building. And so in a real building, yeah, certainly you're going to have different heat loss, whether you're going through a wall or a doorway or a window or a roof or the floor. Uh, but we're going to keep it pretty simple and just uh, have a single heat loss term. So first of all, what we will do is we will define a system boundary. So we're going to call our system boundary just the air inside the building. We're going to be neglecting uh, dynamic temperature changes of the building walls and materials themselves just for the sake of simplicity. So for our energy balance, we're going to have accumulation of thermal energy is equal to energy coming into our system minus energy going out of our system uh, plus energy being generated in our system. So for the accumulation term, we just want to take stock of how much energy the air can hold, basically. So we could represent that as uh, the density of the air times the volume of the air times the heat capacity of the air. And actually our accumulation term, we want this to be a rate of change of energy accumulated because we're doing a dynamic uh, energy balance here. So this is going to be the change in temperature with time. So uh, we're going to use a density. And this is just from doing some quick online uh, reference checking. We are going to use a density of air, which is about, at normal temperatures, this is going to be about 1.3 kilograms per meter cubed. And I'm doing the units here, so it's really incredibly important to keep your units consistent and to make sure that the units of every term here are consistent. So we're going to use a density of 1.3 kilograms per meter cubed. We're going to use a volume of... 125 cubic meters and we're going to use a heat capacity of air of 0 0.7 um, kilojoules per kilogram per degree Celsius and then finally our dt dt is going to be in degrees Celsius per second so uh, when once we do all this math we would get that overall this accumulation terms has units of kilowatts. So we want each individual term in our energy balance to have those same units of kilowatts. So uh, coming into our system, we have this heating element and we're just gonna call that Q sub heater. And again, this is gonna have units of kilowatts. Our out term, uh, we're gonna do a heat loss term of U, or our overall heat transfer coefficient, times A, which is the total surface area over which heat can be lost, times delta T. And this is just going to be our building temperature minus our ambient temperature. So our U, we're going to use a value. This will depend on the thickness of the wall and what type of material. We're going to keep this fairly simple. And we're going to use a U of 0.01 kilowatts per meter squared per degree Celsius. And then our surface area is going to be in square meters, and we're going to use a surface area of 
150 meters squared. So I made a kind of an arbitrary decision here to include our heat term as an in term. You could also think of it as a generation term. Uh, either way, um, the math ends up being the same. So we're just we're not going to have a generation term because we're treating our heat in as a generation term. So now we're going to do what we call what I call compiling our energy balance. Just we're going to do accumulation equals in minus out, and so that gives us rho times V times CP dt dt, where again this big T is the temperature of the air in our room. We're going to assume that it is well mixed, so we're just assuming a uniform temperature throughout. So this is just equal to our heat coming in with Q heater minus our heat loss because we're assuming cold weather outside. So this is minus U A times T minus T infinity. Now the term that we're going to care about is temperature. So when we translate this into Python, we're going to want to solve explicitly for temperature. We'll be using temperature as our dynamic state, and we're going to be assuming all of these other variables are constant here. So what we would do is divide both sides by this quantity rho times V times CP, and then we get dt dt is equal to Q heater minus U A times t minus t infinity and of course this whole quantity is going to be divided by rho times volume times cp. All right so now we're going to jump over to this software where we can uh, program our model into Python but specifically we're going to use this really nice interface for Python models called Collimator. So I'm just going to go on a web browser to collimator.ai you can go to try for free and create an account for free. Um, I've already created an account, so I'm just going to go log in. Here I'm going to create a new module. I'm going to call this module three because this is the first, uh, this is the third module of a bunch of other lectures that I've already done, which you can find uh, by going to the playlist here. So now I'm going to program in this model that we just created here. So again, that model looks like this dt dt equals q heater minus u a times delta t divided by rho v c p. I'm going to uh, program this into Collimator. I'm going to start by bringing in a Python script. All right, so within that Python script, I'm going to call this Python script uh, building. This is a, a thermal model of a building, so I'll just call it building. I want to give this certain inputs. So uh, one of the inputs that I want this model to have is to just the temperature of the the building itself or the, the air inside of our building. I also want it to have uh, this T ambient or T infinity as an input and finally I want Q heater to be an input. So um, if you recall the output of our equation was dt dt so I want that to be the output and I'm just going to use d capital T and then d little t one thing I'm going to do, I'm going to, just to make this a little more readable, I'm going to right click on my Python model and I'm going to go to toggle port labels. That just labels everything. All right, so now I've got this building model defined with inputs and an output. I am going to give this, I'm going to enter in some of those parameters that I talked about. So first we're going to have our parameter U or the overall heat transfer coefficient, which has is 0 0.01 is the value. We're going to give it another parameter. Let's do A next. And again, this was 150 meters squared. Our next parameter is volume. And this had a volume of 125 cubic meters. Uh, our heat capacity, or CP, has a value of 0.7. This is kilojoules per kilogram per degree Celsius. And finally, uh, we've got our density or rho, which I'm going to spell out um, because Greek letters, you can't just type those in on a keyboard. And this is 1.3 uh, kilograms per cubic meter. So now I've got all these parameters. These are basically the constants. These are things that will not change during my simulation. So I'm just going to plug them in as parameters that are specific to this, this script, this Python script, which I've called building. All right, so now we need to go code the energy balance itself. I'm going to left click into here, and here in this 
This is divided up into three sections. This is the initialization section, the finalized section. We don't need either of those in this particular case. We're just going to define our model here. Because um, so this is the code that will integrate that'll execute on every step during our integration. So here I'm just going to code in this model where we solve for the change in temperature with time explicitly. So this is equal to Q heater minus U times A times the, te the temperature of our building air minus the T infinity. And I'm going to be very careful that all the variable names I'm using match up what I have used over here in inputs, outputs, and parameters. So hopefully I'm getting these all correct. So that again, this is going to be divided by rho times our volume times our heat capacity. And I think we're looking good here. So this is all. This is just this is my differential equation that I'm going to be solving. Um, for, by inspection, I'm going to just check that parentheses are lining up OK. I think we're OK here. So I'll go back to my module now. OK, so what I'm going to do is my model spits out the change in temperature with time. And I actually want to integrate that signal. So I'm going to get this integrator block connect this to my derivative. I'm going to call this integrator block just for readability purposes later. I'm going to call this temperature or just T because its output is going to be the real time temperature of our system. Let's we're working in degrees Celsius. I'm going to give this an initial condition of 25 degrees Celsius. So now notice that our building model requires temperature as an input. So the heat loss is a function of what the temperature in our space is at any given time and that uh, comes by, so there's this recursion that has to happen where we, we use our model to calculate the change in temperature versus time, then we integrate that with time, and then we loop this back. So uh, that's this little trick to solving a differential equation this way. Uh, T infinity, this is just our ambient temperature. I'm going to use a just an external input. I'm just going to use a sine wave to approximate like the weather, basically. So my sine wave... I'm going to call this guy just for model readability purposes later. I'm going to call this T infinity. And I'm going to give this a frequency of 0 0.005. So basically, every 0 0.005 seconds, this is going to go through one cycle. I'm going to give it an amplitude of 10 degrees and a bias of 5. So basically, this is going to have an average of five degrees, but it's going to go up by 10 and then down by 10. And this is going to kind of simulate the weather on a cold day when it gets really cold at night and then warmer during the day when the sun is out. So right now, let's just give our system a heating value that is a constant. And we're going to mess around with this in a later video. So I'm just going to say we're constantly heating our system. For readability purposes, I'm going to change this block to be Q heater. And I'm going to give this a constant value of 20. And this is going to have the same units as our energy balance had initially of kilowatts. OK, so I believe we are ready to go ahead and simulate the system. I'm going to left click on some of these blocks that I want to read later. So I go ahead. Oh, one other thing I want to do is I want to set the simulation time. So right now it's set up with an end time of 10. Our model, we've been using time units of seconds, and this comes just inherently from when we defined our original energy balance. We used time units of seconds, so that's what we're going to use here. So this is only going to simulate for 10 seconds unless we change this up. So I want to see maybe a couple hours of simulation. So I'm going to go with 7,200 uh, seconds as my simulation time. So I go up here and click Run. This uh, just takes a couple seconds to run, and then it pops up all these signals. Uh, so here we see this is the temperature of our actual building, and this is the ambient temperature. So since they're both temperatures, I'm going to grab this block here, temperature, and I'm going to move this up so that this is on the same plot as our ambient temperature. And as you can see, as our ambient temperature here in kind of the turquoise, as it varies, our building temperature lags behind it by a little bit. Um, and we're also, we're adding heat continuously of 20 kilowatts. So you can see that our ambient temperature uh, is always a, a, quite a bit lower than our building temperature. So we're right where I'm hovering over, our ambient temperature is about 14 degrees, so pretty cold. 
um, and our building temperature is about nearly 28 degrees. Let's look at the coldest point during the day. It does get down to minus 5, so 5 degrees below freezing. And because of all this heat we're adding, we're adding, it's at this particular instance in time, it's about 10 degrees inside of our building. So our heater is doing some good. All right, that's it for this video. In the next video, we're going to start talking a little bit more about um, how would we control the temperature inside of our building because uh, 10 degrees C is pretty cold. And here it even gets down to below 9 degrees C. So we're not doing quite enough heating here. Um, and we're not, this is still a pretty big fluctuation of temperature inside of a building. So we're going to talk about how would you go about programming a controller that regulates this temperature?